Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome to my channel. Today, I went and got some hatching eggs for our hen to incubate. One of our blue star hens went broody a couple days ago, and I love watching mama hens with babies. We used to let our hens hatch chicks a lot when I was growing up, so I decided to let her hatch her babies. I went and got some silky eggs and some different variety of eggs. Some of them, I'm not sure exactly what they are because the person who I bought them from said they've been moving around their breeding pens. So they could be five different breeds, and so I can just send her pictures of them after they hatch and she'll tell me what they are. So it's kind of a surprise and that's kind of fun, so I'm really excited to see what they are. I went and picked them up today, and then I'm, I have her in a cat kennel with some straw so that she can get used to her, her new area by herself. I don't want her in with the other hens because if they get in her nest and try to lay eggs, they could accidentally break some of her eggs and then I don't want her in with them once the chicks hatch because they could kill them. So I'm getting her used to her own little area and then once she has accepted that nest that I gave her, then I will put all the eggs under her. Then I'll candle them once a week to see if any are infertile and that they're growing properly and I'll, if any die, I'll take those out. She's got food and water. This is actually a chick feeder and water, but she's gonna have chicks in here soon too, and adult hens can still eat and drink out of these, so she's just over here. And we have this nice little chain link area that's plenty big enough for her and her babies, so this will keep the nice and protected. She needs to do a little getting used to this new cage. She doesn't like it right now, but she'll make a little nest in there, and then once she's settled in, I'll give her her eggs. There are the eggs that she had been sitting on and I'm fertilized, so I'm gonna give her some ones that'll actually turn into chicks. So yesterday when I moved the hen to that new little area, she kind of became a little bit unbroody. She didn't really seem to want to be on that nest. She's just not used to the nest. She needs to just learn that that's her spot now. So I actually took the cat carrier and I put it right on the spot where she has been sitting so that she has a familiar surroundings. And then I have her locked in the cat kennel so that she's she's just gonna need to get used to it. And then either tonight or tomorrow morning, I will give her the new eggs once she looks like she's really accepted her new nest. And then once I give her the eggs, I might wait until the next day and then I'll move her back to the new fenced in area. And I might have to teach her how to like get in and out of the nest because they don't always know how to, you know, get back into the nest when they get out to eat. So. Yeah, they're not very smart. Chickens are very dumb, which is kind of nice sometimes and kind of annoying sometimes, but anyway. So then I'm also planning on ha covering the top of that chain link area with fencing so that she can't fly out because the one thing that was happening last night and then once this morning was that if I would open the cat carrier door, she would fly out of that area and go back to her old nest. So I'm gonna cover it so she can't fly out. She has to stay on her new nest and that should work good, so I will keep you guys updated. chicken wire and it's very sloppy but I'm a girl and I used alignments pliers because this is my favorite tool. My dad used to let me use these and so I'm just really familiar with them and I like to use them for everything. Now to put the roof on. I can't cut through that fencing with the, with these, and I can't find anything in the shed that might cut it. I tried clenching them down with a clamp, but it slipped off, so I'll have to wait for Luke. 
I did try. I tried really hard. I got half of the Rupan. That's pretty good for a girl. So down here you can see the chick fencing so they can't get out. And up here I have half of a roof. Here's what I actually ended up doing with this. So there's just wire on this one half and then tarp on the other half so she can't get out and she's sheltered from rain or bad weather and predators. All her eggs are in there. She seems to have accepted her nest pretty well. So she's just out here getting some food and water and then if she doesn't go in here by herself, I'll put her in and lock her in all night. And then after that, she should do it on her own. So a little update on our broody hen. She broke one of the silky eggs, which I'm very sad about, but it's not the end of the world. The people I got it from said, if I put all those eggs under her, there's a chance she might break some of them. So I wasn't super surprised and I've been keeping her locked in her kennel because she doesn't seem to be able to find her way back in when I let her out to eat and drink. So I go out there twice a day and let her have like five, 10 minutes out to eat and drink and just walk around a little bit. But then she seems, she starts to freak out and like pace the fence to want to get to her own chicken coop. And then I put her back in the box. And when she's in the box, she acts really broody and she sits on her eggs and like does her little growly thing when I like look at her. So she's obviously broody. She just is a little too dumb to find her nest again. So that's what's been going on with her lately. Broody hen update, she's broken a total of two silky eggs now and I'm still having to keep her locked in this cat kennel all the time, except for I let her out two times a day to eat and drink and have a little bit of a break and then I lock her back in and I don't know how long I'm gonna have to do that. Hopefully not too much longer. See, she's kind of fluffing up and getting her eggs underneath her. So I know she's broody. She's just not doing a very good job yet. See, she's, she's totally broody. I just don't think she can find her way back into her house. All right, it's the morning of day seven and I'm just going to gather up all the eggs and bring them in so we can candle them in a dark room and see which ones are infertile. This one's infertile. You can see how there's no veins growing along the inside. This one looks good. This one looks good too. We just candled all the eggs and it's looking like two of the three silky eggs that are left or infertile and one is growing pretty well. But um, it's been a while since I've done this so I'm gonna leave them all in there even if they look infertile and then next week will be easier to tell for sure which ones are good. Hello. <laughs> and then we have 10 of the other ones that are the full size chicken eggs and it looked like two out of the 10 were infertile. But again, I'm gonna leave them in there and then next week, week two is always my favorite week because like, they're starting to be big enough to be able to really see them well, but not so big that you can't like see anything. Like it just looks black, like how it usually looks in week three. So next week, I'll be able to tell for sure which ones are infertile and are not growing. And I'll take them out to make more room for the ones that are there. You can see the baby chick moving around in there. But you can see those big veins down the side. Here's one of the silky eggs too. You can see how it's all just like slashing over to the side like that. This one died. All right, so I was a little bit late candling eggs. I think I was supposed to do it like a day ago. I wasn't too late, but there are only five big eggs left and one silky egg. The rest of them are dead and not looking very good. She did lay a couple in there, so now I know she's really not broody anymore because she's laying eggs again. So she only has like four or five days left and they're looking like like they're getting really big. She just needs to sit on there for like four or five more days. Oh, they're so close. And I don't know, I'm just trying not to get my hopes up. I'm just gonna try to tell myself that none are gonna hatch. She's just gonna ruin them all so that I don't get really sad. But sometimes this is the reality of farm life is you have animals die and it's still really sad. So I'm gonna get the brooder ready in the house just in case any hatch and she abandons them or she starts picking on them and I have to take them from her. Well, the eggs are due to hatch tomorrow and she's still not doing very well, but I don't know. I'm hoping that she's gonna be okay. Like, she still has four eggs. She has three big eggs and one silky egg. And what we discovered is that if we cover her box with blankets, as long as it's not too warm, obviously, that she will hold still and stop. She stopped breaking them, which was really nice. So we discovered that little trick for you guys. 
Um, so she hasn't broken anymore in a few days. So we're hoping that she stops breaking them. And then, I don't know, I will be very happy if she even hatches one at this point. So we'll see, but they're due to hatch tomorrow and I'm thinking they might be late just because she's left them for long stretches and that usually doesn't kill them unless it's like over 24 hours or something, but they usually hatch late. So on the hatching day, I'm gonna bring her in the house with the blankets over so I can hear for the chicks. And I'm kind of thinking that I'm gonna take them away from her once they hatch, cause she's not broody and I, I really don't want her to kill them. And I'm so tired of babysitting her. It's been four days past when these eggs should have hatched and I just candled these. And three of them are looking all sloshy, so I know they're dead. There's one that might still be alive, so I'm gonna leave it in there. But I'm gonna open these up and see what was in there and how far they progressed. really big bummer. I really thought some of them would hatch, so. But at least it was a good learning experience and now we know that we won't put eggs under a broody hen unless we know for sure, for sure that she's gonna stay there after we move her away from the other hens. So that was our first mistake. Now we know that we can, as long as it's not too hot, we can cover her house with blankets if she's not staying. And we, we did learn quite a bit of stuff from this so it wasn't totally horrible, but I just feel so bad. And even, even living on a farm, when you butcher animals, it's different than when they just die and you don't want them to, and I'm really sad. Earlier today, I did go and get four new little pullets. They're like eight weeks old. So that made me feel a little bit better because I do really want some more chickens. I am totally addicted to buying chickens. <laughs> I'm really getting tired of it because we have more than we should, probably should in town. So we have those four new little pullets and those will replace the ones that would have hatched. And then later this year, we'll probably still get some Rhode Island Reds and Silky pullets. So it's gonna be okay, but I probably will still post this video just so that people can see the things that we learned from this and then it won't be all bad. I post three new videos a week on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, and I will see you next time. Bye!